cool. In good company. So, okay, you you went in the Air Force, you went to vet school, and you, I assume you came out and you practiced traditional veterinary medicine for a time, and and then you were just so over <laughs> not being able to help these pets, right? Like, that's what I'm getting. Things slowly happen. So yeah, I graduated vet school in 2001. I actually started out as a food animal vet. Um, and then by 2008 in the recession, most of my farmers sold out. And so I was like, well, what am I going to do? And in the meantime, I had slowly started having more and more small animals because I'd take care of their dogs and cats and their horses and, and all of that. And then at the same time, then I had, or again, around 2008, I had the couple of clients with the lame horse and the lame dog. So then I had went to chiropractic training and most of the animal chiropractic training for veterinarians, it's like a 250 hour course and it's, you know, five, four day weekends and pretty heavy duty, good best neurology training I've had. Um, and at the end, one of my teachers is like, I can't tell you how to fix this, but you need to come to one of my classes. And I'm like, what the heck? So I got done with this basic chiropractic training where we learn these basic conditions and it was great foundation. And then I go the next weekend to his next class and I was like oh my goodness the pelvis does more than just this it does all this rotation and all this stuff because there's this horse with this pelvis like this and his head is like this and he's all tight and jacked up in between and that's when I learned applied kinesiology which is the muscle testing and then I applied that to western medicine so like a dog would come in, we did a little lab test and said, oh, Fluffy has a bladder infection. I'd get out 15 antibiotics and herbs and muscle test which one strengthened the bladder to try to pick the best one. And, you know, things just developed over time. And then I got more training and more education and discovered that um, my little seven pound dog who gets the same size vaccine as a 200 pound Mastiff might not be being served with that little vaccine. So you have to give the full dose of vaccine. If you don't, the state and the um, the veterinary board don't like that. So I relinquished my license. And that's when talking to Susan Thixton, she's like, you know, Kathy, now that you're not working as a Western veterinarian anymore, you should start a trade association and represent fresh pet food companies. Because by this time, I'd learned what was in the pet food, discovered that I had been selling a prescription food and that I was like charging people money and poisoning their animals. And God, talk about a guilt trip. So then I, you know, made the transition to fresh, real food. And she's like, you need to represent these people. So that's how six years ago, eight, oh gosh, that's eight years ago, I started the trade association to represent fresh pet food manufacturers. So now I'm the one who sits at the AFCO table and says, well, for us in the fresh pet food industry, we really don't care if you change the name of corn gluten meal to corn protein meal because we don't use it. Yeah. So that's my story. (laughs) I think that's most of it. That's the short version. Uh, Yeah, very short. Oh, I still advise people everything always starts with fresh food meanwhile i represent the fresh pet food industry to afco i set up meetings with fda on behalf of my members uh you know so politics yeah but it's needed because that's that's 